Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to game night. Take a seat, relax, get comfy. And today we're gonna be unboxing this game, Eschaton. Eschaton, Eschaton. This I got from Gen Con, a board game convention. I'll have to work around Bud for this video. <laughs> he has a lot more pets, you can tell by his tail thwomping, but he's comfy. This nice. <laughs> so anyway, Eschaton is a deck building game. Uh, we really enjoy that style of board game. And this just seemed like a cool version. Also, I had realized that I, I trade a lot of my board games kind of like between friends and family and things. And somehow I have traded away all of my deck building games. <laughs> Clank, Mystic Veil. I never had Dominion. So I needed one for my, myself. <laughs> And Eschaton is a fairly hefty deck building game. It's supposed to take like a couple hours, yeah, one to three hours. I thought it would be fun to kind of have a deck building game that you can sink your teeth into. Also, as you can tell, it's very like moody, gothy aesthetic, which, you know, I like a lot of aesthetics. I just like when people commit to whatever their aesthetic is, so this makes me very happy. <laughs> Muddy boy! Do you want more pets? Do you want more pets? No, he doesn't. He's done. Go bye. So, the concept of this game is sort of cult world domination. So, you're trying to get your cult to be the one that succeeds in sort of a risk style um, standoff. So, if you've played Risk before, the board will be very similar, but the rest of the gameplay will be very different. So, this is the rule book. So, actually, I don't think we played with these pieces. We just did a short version. But this, I think, is the first player token. And then there's little flies, little flies, and little skulls. So we'll pop these out. I'm gonna shred this. <laughs> it's a tough one to shred. <laughs> High quality cardboard, I guess. Risk-like game board, <laughs> like Risk, but without all the colors. It actually is kind of like a soft, sagey, sagey green. Hopefully, 
Hopefully you can see that in the camera. Almost dark, but a little bit green tinted. Definitely spooky. <laughs> and this is some mystical fantasy worlds for Eschaton. I actually don't know if this game is based on certain books or stories. I haven't heard of it before. Um, but maybe. Oh, look, they already kind of bag things nicely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, extra bags. I think the extra bags will be for all of the different cards, so you can keep them separate. There's also a bunch of different cards you can buy from, so you'll kind of have them laid out for purchase during the game. So I bet the bags are for that. And the display they had at Gen Con was really cool. They had like all these fake candles, just like hundreds of them. And all of the decoration was dark and spooky. And they had, I think this might be one of the games that has a custom soundtrack that goes to it. So I'll double check that when we start playing, but that'd be very exciting because the music they were playing at the convention was Perfect to the number one for this. These are player boards. I think each player gets one of these, so this is for their deck, and then this is for everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so that's nice. and auras. So yeah, there's these are all the different colors for the different cults. So you choose your color. And then what else do they have in here? These are sort of bonuses for certain territories that you take over on the map. And so you'll put those on the map and then whoever owns that territory gets whatever benefit is there. Alright, so let's see what we got. We have a pontiff. Pontiff, pontiff, pontiff. Here's the back of the card. Yet another skull, of course. <laughs> Pontiff, architect of the end, marauder, marauder, few of words, limitless in violence, marauder, few of words, limitless in violence, ooh, a lot of marauders, then I think I'll start sorting these, might as well. We have the archon, relentless aggressor. Disciple. But he's drinking water. <laughs> Disciple. Whisper of the shadows. Whisper of the shadows. I'm not gonna read through all of these because like I said, there's a lot of cards. And when I was playing this, I was like, oh, do all these cards come with like an expansion? But no, it just comes with base game, which is quite nice. <laughs> that you don't have to keep purchasing things. It is kind of expensive on the first purchase. 
$60, I think, but it comes all in one. And it's, yeah, quite a lot of content, so I'm hoping I get a lot for my money's worth. That's just one pack, so you can tell we got a lot, a lot to work with, a lot of mm, iterations of this game. If you played Dominion, that's kind of the opposite in terms of expansions. The base game probably isn't that expensive, but then you could probably spend $100, $200 on all the different expansions, and it's it's a lot. <laughs> but I wonder if this game, Eschaton, you can sort of customize and change up like you do with Dominion. So how Dominion works is you'll select which cards you're playing with for that game. So pretty much the strategy for every single game is gonna be different. So I wonder if you could sort of limit the number of cards for this game to play with a strategy and make each game a little different. Some more Pontiffs. We have a Seer Weaver of Realities Veil. Weaver of Realities Veil. I like that. <laughs> supplicant, Supplicant. Bearer of the Dark Word. Templar, Templar, mm. Templar, Templar, Unbridled Disdain, Unbridled Disdain. We have a Thrall, Zealot, March, oh these I think stay in their own little deck, yeah they have a different deck. And then there's also some cheat sheet cards, which I love. Pretty much every game should have a cheat sheet card, <laughs> unless it's very simple rules. So I appreciate that. We're already getting a little overloaded with cards, so I'm gonna start putting them in bags. Ooh, it's gonna be very satisfying to sort these all. <laughs> I'm curious if any of you are board gamers or tabletop gamers, if you have kind of like a favorite game mechanism or format. Um, like I said, we really like deck builders, big fan of those. I think there's only been like one or two deck builders we haven't really liked. But I'm wondering, because one of my friends, like, does not like deck builders at all. <laughs> so I'm wondering if people kind of have different uh, takes on that. What's your favorite game format? I would say probably my least favorite is the RPG, tabletop RPG games. Um, I know people really love them and I think that's very cool, but they just maybe aren't for me. <laughs> oh, there are not enough bags for the number of cards we have. Oh, don't love that. Why did they give me these extra bags then? Hmm. I don't know why they didn't give me enough bags. Let's see what the last is. But yeah, I'll try role-playing games every few months, you know? Give it its fair shot, but I think my problem is <laughs> The scope of the game is not clearly defined, <laughs> and then it, that to me means I should just try everything, right? I should just do a million things, ask a million questions to each person <laughs> that we encounter, um, but then usually the DM gets annoyed with me, so 
Not sure if that's what I'm supposed to do. I swear it's like, we were playing Pathfinder. And I was like, we try this, we try that. <laughs> Maybe we like, uh, you know, stand on this thing and then they like can't get us and they're like, stop doing all this stuff. They didn't say that, but I could see it in their eyes. <laughs> So it feels like it's free form. You can do whatever you want, but not actually whatever you want. That's the part that's confusing to me. It's like board games, they have very clear instructions. And a lot of times if you can bend the rules, they'll tell you that in the rule book, which I really like. But it's very apparent how you're supposed to play the game. But tabletop games, it's like, I don't know how they want me to play this. <laughs> And I feel like they're not happy with how I'm playing. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can buy these. These are the relic cards. So we have aggression relic, scour relic, divine relic. I'm gonna put these in one bag because we're running out of bags. <laughs> of the heavy hitting cards, so you like summon a crone or a familiar to work for your cult. Did I try this already? No, this will work. Auras and relics. Okay. We have arcane madness, unholy scripture. These look like Mostly auras, maybe some other things. Putting them in back. <laughs> and then, suppose I'll have to double up some of these bags. Accolade. Archon and Thrall. Zealot and Thunder. You know what? Oh wait, I missed some of the archons. Mm -hmm. Those are all pretty full. Okay. Herald and Fanatic. This is almost, it almost has the feel of Elder Tor a little bit, but even darker. There's no chance of saving the world. <laughs> it's going down to one cult or another. <laughs> but some of the imagery just reminds me of Eldritch. Let's start organizing. So, okay, the cards have three different slots. We don't know what those are yet, so I'm just going to go into it. Alright, 
So yes, that's Eschaton. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I got plenty of other board game content. But yeah, I will uh, see you again soon in the next one. Bye bye bye.